So one of the things I teach when I teach people how to become developers is the 20 minute a day strategy when they first start out as, well, when they're first starting out to learn how to code. Now the 20 minute a day strategy is a strategy that works on many levels. So let me explain. Well, first of all, let me just read this comment that somebody just sent to me from a video I posted a couple days ago. He says, hey, Steph, 20 minutes of coding a day would help with the anxiety, but many self-taught developers, most of them have YouTube channels, recommend minimum two hours a day of coding a day. Less than that means you don't have what it takes to be a successful self-taught web developer. What do you think? So I roll back. I think context is everything. The 20 minute a day is a strategy that leads to results. So bottom line is the reason I recommend the 20 minutes a day of coding to start as you're learning how to code. Let me emphasize that to start, to start, because when you're first learning how to code, this is the most difficult time in the process. That's where most people give up when they're first starting out. And so if you have, if you set yourself a two hour a day or a four hour a day goal of learning how to code, it seems like a good idea, right? Two hours is better than 20 minutes. Four hours is better than two hours, right? Here's the problem. When you're first learning how to code, and I've been teaching people for a long time. So when people are first learning how to code, it's it's a, it can be a frustrating problem, uh, process rather, initially in the first little while. And it's the most difficult time. So what you need to do is you need to put into place processes and plans that will make it easier, psychologically speaking, for you to learn how to code. And so we want to reduce as much as possible the anxiety in the process. If you plan out the two hour a day minimum and let's say you come home from school or work and you got to set aside two hours that's a pretty good commitment it's a pretty big commitment I can guarantee you a lot of people if not the vast majority will go oh, I don't want to do two hours a day and they'll end up playing video games or doing anything but code the problem with that is you're not making any progress when you don't do anything on the other hand if you set the 20 minute a day as your goal, that's really achievable. That, in fact, is simple to do. Simple to do. So you say, okay, psychologically, it's a lot easier to sit down and go, okay, I'm just going to do 20 minutes today. It's no big deal. Just 20 minutes. Just 20 minutes. No big deal. So you sit down and you do your 20 minutes. And if you don't feel it after 20 minutes, you go, okay, I'm done. I've done my 20 minutes. I've moved the ball forward. I've made some progress. Oftentimes, though, you sit down to do 20 minutes, it becomes 25 minutes, it becomes 30 minutes, it becomes 35 minutes. As we all know, oftentimes when you're doing anything, the hardest part is just to get that ball rolling, just to get it going. Once you're in it, it's a lot easier, right? So that's the whole point of the 20-minute-a-day strategy. We're trying to re reduce the psychological load on a learner, number one. Number two... We are main because we're reducing psychological load, the chances of you executing on your plan, daily plan of 20 minutes a day, is far, 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 far greater than, say, if you said, I'm doing two hours, four hours, which is, which is a far bigger commitment. So we need to get the ball rolling. And here's the final point I've talked about all the time. When you're learning anything new, you are literally, you are literally, creating new neural pathways, uh, you're introducing new types of knowledge that your brain may have not seen before, uh, especially when you go from n never having done any coding before to coding, because you got to learn to think in a totally different way. Your brain needs two things. It needs frequency, frequent exposure. The more often your brain sees something, the more it's going to pay attention to it, the more it's going to value it, the more resources your brain will be put towards understanding that environment. So, translation, if you can expose your brain to daily, even small doses of code or coding, 
whoa, your brain's going to go, whoa, this is important stuff. We better put some resources to it. This is what you see happen all the time. Whether you're an experienced coder running into a bug or trying to understand some new framework, or you're a beginner trying to get your head wrapped around, I don't know, inheritance and object-oriented programming. So you run across the problem, and you're like, I just don't understand. Your brain cannot comprehend. Or you run across a, a bug, and your brain, you just can't, why is this bug? Why can't I see this bug? And the advice I always tell people is, put it aside, wait 24 hours or so, come back to it. And then one day, you wake up and you go, ah, oh, now I understand, it's so simple. I can't tell you how many times I hear from students who tell me, you know what, I didn't have an understanding of recursion. I just couldn't get ahead, my head wrapped around what that was. And then I just woke up one morning, and it, was, it just all made sense, Steph. I just, I, I'm unbelievable. So why does this happen? Do you have like magical little nerd elves in your brain that are uh, slowly uh, putting together the information for you? Well, kind of in a way you do. You see, what happens is as your brain gets exposed to a new concept on a frequent basis, daily, 20 minutes a day, it starts to go, okay, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make sense of all this. So it starts devoting the time and energy necessary to uh, making the neural connections, if you will, such that this stuff becomes understandable. So that's why when you wake up the next morning, when you're giving your brain a rest, much in the same way somebody works out and rests for a day or two, then they make gains, right? And ask any bodybuilder, the rest time is very, very important. In some ways, you can say it's more as, it is as important as the training itself. You got to give yourself, your body, a chance to rest so it can make those gains, you know, when you're talking about weightlifting. Same thing with coding and learning how to code, learning anything technical. You got to give your brain time to be able to um, assimilate the information to make the necessary changes to itself so that it can understand this stuff. So that's why it's such a common story. It's a cliche where you wake up one morning having not understood something for the longest time and all of a sudden, it's so easy, I understand it now. It's happened to me many times. So, the 20-minute-a-day rule serves several purposes. Reduces anxiety, gives your brain that frequency of exposure to the new material uh, on a daily basis. Well, I recommend four to five days a week. You want to take some time off to give your brain a rest. And um, by that frequency of, of exposure, again, the brain says, this must be important. We better put some resources into it. That's why I recommend the 20-minute-a-day learning principle. It works a charm. All right, so let's talk about context. Context is everything. One of the ways in which people are emotionally manipulated is by manipulating statements people make in terms of the context. So let's talk about context. I'm going to talk about Ruby now, and we'll see how... Simple editing can change the entire meaning of a statement. Be very careful. It's a common way of uh, manipulating people's minds. By far and away, Ruby is the best choice out there. If your goal is to write code in an infrastructure and language that is slowly becoming more and more marginalized, which means you're going to have a harder and harder time finding people to maintain that code base. If your goal is to have an application that you might have problems later on down the road in terms of scale, then by far and away, Ruby is the best choice out there.